Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of the video. So first of all, sorry for last video. I know the, the, the audio was not working very nicely. It was a little bit like too harsh or something. I think this is better. However, let me know, you guys, let me know if you need to turn up your volume like really, really high or if this is a good amount. Just just leave me in the comments and uh, I, I wanna <laughs> soundproof this whole thing and make sure that uh, I don't have to tweak anything else. I think it's, it's uh, clearer, I think it's better. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's too too soft or too loud, so let me know. Now, let's jump right into our uh, mini project here. We're gonna continue with our uh, chain mail coif, and we already have our very nice elements here. Now, of course, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select all of these guys, except for the curves, of course. I'm gonna combine them, delay history, center pivot, phrase transformation, just to keep this clean. I'm gonna call this uh, coif low. There we go. Now, see this thing right here? This is called a namespace. And sometimes when you import things into Maya, they will assign a namespace to it so that you know from which scene or from which object or, or file it came. That's very annoying. So very quick way to delete those is right here in the windows, general editors. You're going to namespace editor. You're gonna see all the namespaces that you have. You can select both of them. Just hit delete, merge with root, merge with root, and that will just delete them. Uh, of course, make sure that you uh, properly name things and properly uh, organize everything so that you don't get lost. Now here, uh, I do want to have a, a high poly for the uh, for this guys right here for the borders because that, that's going to just make it easier. So I'm going to duplicate the coif low. Let's isolate it for a second. Let's delete this guys right here. And then this guys, I'm going to say mesh smooth. Probably one more, like really, really smooth line. There we go. So now this guy and the high, we're going to combine into a single object. So this is what we have now. And this is going to be my coif. Uh, I need to move my head because now the microphone is like really here and, and the keyboard's over there. And I sometimes don't see the words. Uh, coif high. Now you can see there's other things that are called coif high. So let's delete these things. Oh, not those things. Let's first grab this guy, delete history so that everything, there we go. So now we just need to delete this guys. And this is going to be my uh, coif high. There we go. So grab this guy, file, export selection. Even if we're not seeing it, you can still export it. FBX is fine. Let's go to our assets folder, chainmail coif, and call this chainmail coif, uh, just like that. And then we're gonna grab the high, just export again. I'm just gonna call this chainmail coif underscore uh, high. There we go. So let's open Substance Painter now. And here's the cool thing. Now we're going to be looking at the transparency, how, how transparency works inside of Substance and how we're going to be using it. Now, before I go here into Substance, though, I do need to get my chain mail material. So I believe that on the Substance share site, which is the community shared uh, elements, there is a, a, um, there is a Substance, like a chain mail material. Uh, yeah, this one right here. So if you don't have access to the to the actual um, uh, to the substance source, which is a little bit better, uh, this one's really really good, and, and you can just download it as well to to do the the exercises that we're gonna be doing. Now I'm gonna go to substance source because that's the that's the pro version, right? <laughs> so let's go to substance source. Well, it's not called substance three D assets. I just remember from the other one. It's uh, source. Let's log in. Uh, close, and I'm gonna look for chainmail. And let's see, we have uh, Chainmail Emboss. Oh, we don't have a Chainmail here? That's interesting. I thought we had a Chainmail. Let's look for Chain. Not, there we go, Chain. There we go. So Medieval Stylized Medieval uh, Chain Armor, Stylized Medieval Rectangular Chain Armor. So we're going to do this one. So I'm just going to download, of course. And uh, inside of Substance, you already know the drill. We're going to go File. Recent file, sorry, new, and we're gonna select our. Oh, we don't need to select the template, we just just use the default. Let's do 4K. Let's go like really high. DirectX is fine, and I'm gonna select now our uh, project here. So next to live assets and uh, chainmail, and we're gonna say chainmail coif. That's the low poly, and no udems. So it's just the, the code right here, and this is what we should have. Pretty pretty cool. Now we're gonna go into texture set settings, of course, and we're gonna go into bake texture, bake mesh maps, and I'm gonna bake the 4K map of the um, chain mail high, which is just gonna add a little bit of uh, a couple of curvatures here. So, I mean, if you want, you can change the anti-aliasing to two by two so that we get a little bit of a cleaner bake, uh, but it shouldn't be that much of a deal. Like it's, uh, it's just some very simple wrinkles there that are gonna modify the texture slightly, just a, a little detail, right? 
uh, rigging, when, when we rig this or if we skin this, that's where you would see like the actual movement. It will stretch though, in games, uh, chainmail and metal armor usually stretches, which is, I mean, again, not the ideal setup, but it's it's not the end of the day. Uh, it's it's very common right now until we have like super powerful uh, computers and super powerful like uh, consoles. Um, there's certain things that we have to deal with, and the stretching of structures, like stretching of meshes, is something that's very very common. Even in in, in cinema, eh, by the way, like if you if you grab a like a rig from uh, How to Train Your Dragon, there are pieces where where the the metal or the leather stretches in like unnatural ways. But in the middle of the action, in the middle of the scene, you don't really notice it. So um, give me just one second here. Let's wait for this to. There we go, so the baking is complete, and now we have uh, everything here. Now, here's where the interesting part, or the interesting uh, effect for the opacity map is gonna, is gonna start uh, occurring. I'm gonna, of course, drag and drop my texture into my SVSR here. I'm gonna define this as a metal, that's fine, this is a base material, and I definitely want this in my assets, so that anytime I need it, it's gonna be right here. So the problem here is, if I were to just drag and drop this thing over here, you're gonna see that, yes, we're gonna get our chain mill effect, as you can see right there. But unfortunately, we're not seeing it through. And that's that's a bummer, right? Like the, the reason why we're doing this is because we wanna see it through the mesh. So here's where one of the settings, and it's not hidden, but you definitely need to dig around the internet to find exactly how to do this. It's not difficult. Uh, we need to add the channel because right now, if we go into texture set settings, this object only has a base color channel, a metallic channel, a roughness channel, a normal channel, and a height channel. And we need opacity to paint opacity and, and make sure that we get the effect that we're looking for. So what we need to do is I'm gonna go here into the channels option, click this plus sign, and I'm gonna say add an opacity channel. Where is it? Uh... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it, it, I'm looking for it, but it's all, all the way here and unsupported by shader. Why? Because we need to select the proper shader for this to work. So if we go to the second option here, which is the shader settings, it's where we usually do the, the parallax and when we do the displacement and uh, subsurface scattering, which if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to show you. Uh, and here I need to change this from uh, PBR metal roughness, which is the like the basic uh, material that we're using. And I'm gonna change this to met metal roughness with alpha test. And the alpha test, as you can see, this is a cutout. So we're gonna, ha gonna have black and white. When you have a black color, it's gonna be uh, opaque. And I believe when you have a, or it's gonna be transparent. And when you have a white, it's gonna be uh, solid. So this is the one that we're gonna be using. If you ever need to do or have a shader where things are gonna be, um, you know, like a blended when you have like a like a soft transition from one texture to the other then you might need this PBR metal roughness with alpha blending which is going to give you a nice transition it's definitely more uh like performance uh, it's a it's a hit on the performance like if you want to have like a like a soft grading in engine like in unreal or in unity it's going to be a little bit uh heavier uh, than just like a traditional cutout uh but it, it works so there we go. Now we need to go to the channels and now that we have a proper or a, a compatible shader, we can add an opacity channel and immediately you're gonna see that it detects that this texture, texture has opacity and look at that. We can immediately see through the chain links in a very nice like clean cut fashion of course. Now we're just gonna go back to the layers options, go back to the stylized chain mill here and I'm gonna increase the scale. How big? Well, it of course depends on, on the scale of the character, but I think something like this may be a little bit more. Let's say six. I think six, maybe five. Five is better. I think five is way better. And look at that. <laughs> Super clean chain link. Like easy, 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 easy. No need to uh, to overcomplicate things. Everything's looking nice. Of course, of course, up here, we're going to have this like sort of mess where, where chain links are trying to uh, like emerge together in a very weird way. And unfortunately, we are gonna have a seam. However, as I mentioned before, it's it's not something that we can easily avoid. Some of you might say, well, why, why not do the trick where we use tri planar projection? Well, yeah, we could, but the problem with tri planar projection is now what you're gonna get is on the seams, like here on the top view, on the uh, back view and stuff, you're gonna see a little bit of a, of a weird line. Now, if you think this looks better for your project, uh, feel free to do it. It's just like, see this? It's it's where where the top, uh, front and side, like pictures of the tray panel projection are, are crashing. That's where you're gonna see this sort of uh, transition. Now, I think we can move this uh, hardness. So we could make this hardness like really, really low. And that might give us a better look, I think. Actually, that's not bad, to be honest. Um, and um, it's gonna look a little bit more like welded points. 
So yeah, I mean, feel free to use it if that's something that you feel is gonna be better for your effect. Now, this is something very interesting. It's, uh, I don't remember the name of the effect. If some of you guys remember it, make sure to leave it on the comments so that everyone can learn as well. But there's an effect where when you have a repeating pattern like this, the, the farther away you are, you're gonna start seeing this sort of line. So see how it looks like there's a, a middle section line going through the, through the, through the element, but there, it, there's actually none, like there's no lines. It's like a, like a visual effect on our, on our eyes where it can't really process a pattern. And as you can see here, like if we, if we go really close, there, there's no pattern, there's no line, there's no seam. Uh, but from far away, you might see it. So it, it's just, it's just a visual, um, sort of a trick on our minds. So yeah, I mean, using this trick prime projection with a really, really hard hardness, I'm even tempted to go like all the way. Uh, so it looks like welded pieces and, and, and the pattern is complex enough that people are not going to really know this and it's just going to look like chain mill and, and you're going to be fine. So, so I think this is really good. Now, uh, let's go for the leather. So I'm going to look for a leather material here, leather. And I think I have one very, it's a little bit heavy, but I have this like cracked, uh, leather, a cracked, crackled gold leather, or this, a patinated caffeine leather. I like this one. Let's try this one. It's a little bit heavy. It's a, it's a heavy shader because it has, it has a lot of uh, stuff. So of course, going to say black mask and I'm going to go to polygon fill. I'm going to fill this line, oop, this line right here and this line right here. Now you can see, and this is again, something very, very common in substance that the chain mail effect is actually transitioning through the, um, the mask. So one thing I strongly recommend is going back here, adding a black mask and just uh, selecting the, the coif. That way the, the chain links are not gonna be moving towards the, the rest of the element. Now I am gonna go here to the to the material again and let's up the scale so that we have a nice nice effect, something like that I think it's, uh, it's uh, appropriate. However, <coughs> sorry, you can see that the amount of uh, of height information, the, the, the bumpiness of the, of the texture is way, way, way too much. So I need to navigate all the way down here and there's this uh, technical parameters and we can go to the height uh, range, which is kind of like the intensity and just bring this down because it's, it's really breaking the surface. It should be just like a, like a very, very soft noise. See, that's, that's way better. It's a little bit closer to what we're looking for. That's, <laughs> that's not, of course, so let's just add a little bit there. We just want to have a little bit of detail that, that that's way too much. So, so you need to be very subtle. Sometimes the textures that you get from, from substance source or substance here, they're not properly calibrated to the scale or the effects that you want. So make sure to check them out. One of the our responsibilities as an artist is to, to go here and, and modify them. Now this is a little bit too uh, light. So I'm going to see if we can darken the, the skin a little bit. I think it's going to, yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. That's way, way better. Let's let's give it a second. And I am definitely gonna increase the roughness a little bit. And I'm even gonna go, sometimes when, when you change a color here, it only changes colors on certain parts of the texture uh, because that's the way these materials are built. Uh, however, if you have access to the technical parameters, those tend to be like a, like a general color correction thing. So for instance, if I lower the luminosity on the, on the, on the technical parameters, that's immediately gonna darken the whole texture. See that? That's way too much, of course. So let's say like 0.48, for instance. So that we get a, a darker uh, a dar darker color without uh, actually affecting anything else. Now, this does not mean that we don't have access to all of the other things that we usually have access to, which is, for instance, dirt. So let's add a very quick, uh, like a rust layer. Let me delete this thing. Let's look for our very trusty rust. There we go. And we're gonna right click, add a black mask, and we're gonna be um, right clicking, adding a generator, and of course, adding a dirt generator, dirt generator, which should go, as you can see, I especially wanted to go here on the on the leather and on the, on the links. I don't want as much rust anywhere else. I'm definitely gonna change this to like an overlay so that the colors are closer to, uh, to the colors of the metals and, and we don't have just like a, uh, like a layer on top, like you always want to make sure that the colors kind of like mix together. And on the dirt options, there's this grunge amount. And by removing the grunge amount, that's where we're going to be removing that uh, effect. Let's add a little bit more. I definitely want this to be very like contrasty like this. And you guys know my, my trick, right? The, the cloud trick that we can use to break up the surface a little bit. So let's go to a fill layer and we're going to add a cloud uh, or a black and white spots. So it doesn't really matter. Let's increase the scale and definitely increase the contrast. I 
this, and now we're going to multiply this against the previous one. As you can see, we're going to get this sort of effect. And the cool thing about this is we can play around with the with the with the valence, and that's how much rust we're going to allow into the into the coif. So as you can see, it's just a a couple of splotches here and there, and that's going to give us a, an interesting effect. Um, the uh, the leather sometimes gets a little bit scratched, right? So I'm going to add just a basic uh, color here. I'm going to use like a like a beige color, uh, something like this. The roughness is definitely going to be high. I'm going to say add black mask. Let's just go here and here. And then I'm going to say add generator. And I'm going to add a metal edgeware, which should only hit this thing. I'm going to, of course, multiply this. So it only hits the, the element there. I'm going to change this to linear dodge. I really like linear dodge. Of course, very, very soft. And uh, let's play around with the wear level because I don't want as much wear level, something like this. And we definitely need to add the same trick that we did before, so just a fill layer. And we're going to add a, uh, again, let's do like a clouds. Clouds three. And we're going to multiply this as well so that we only get this sort of uh, detail in certain areas of the element. I'm probably going to increase the contrast here so that it's uh, like some sharper, sharper noises there. Probably increase this a little bit just so we see it. And there we go. So now we're going to have a very nice, like a damaged effect on, on certain borders of the of the thing without having that much of, a, of an issue. Now, there's a couple of this ones. I, want, I wanted to show you this stitches uh, cross seam uh, material, which is very cool. So I'm going to create a new paint layer in this case. And on my brushes here, there's an option that we can use to paint with a material. So I'm going to grab this guy right here and drop it in here. And now what should happen, if I'm not mistaken, is we're going to paint the stitches there. See that? So uh, I'm going to increase the spacing. Or, yeah, let's increase the spacing a little bit. And you can see how we're painting uh, stitches. And one thing you can do is let's turn on symmetry so that we don't have to worry that much about the, the whole thing. And uh, I am going to turn on lazy mouse, which is this one right here. And now if I start painting, you can see how we're going to get our interesting like cross cross or crisscross effect right there. So it could be could be a nice little detail that we could. I don't think it's really necessary right now because uh, it's just like a like a border here. Uh, but if you want to add more details, the stitching uh, can really help. You could also do that in the in the high poly. Like if we were to bake like each individual stitch from ZBrush, that could also work, and it's it's completely fine. Uh, but that's it, guys. I mean, this is this is pretty much it. As you can see, we have this very very nice. Um, uh, effect, which is the, the chain mail. Everything is looking good. I think I might add just a couple of uh, light. Usually the sun uh, burns or, or washes away certain colors. So if something is exposed to the sun for a long period of time, you're going to see a little bit more uh, like a damage. So I'm going to do something very quick here. I'm just going to use a, a white color and I'm going to use a black mask. And this color is going to be um, using a generator and I'm going to use a light generator that's gonna be hitting it from the top like this. And I'm gonna play around with the, with the glossiness so that we're only hitting like, like the top part like this, see? So it's like a, it's kind of like a, like a dust layer. And then we can use this again as a linear dodge and just modify this. Maybe even like a different color. Maybe we can go like to like a, not like a red, but like a, maybe like a bluish or something. And we can play around and see what looks good. I think this is, this is fine. And again, this is just gonna like add a little bit of an extra layer on the top so that it, it looks like uh, like something is happening there. We can, let's try like an overlay. What happens with an overlay? I'm not seeing that much of a result or a change. Uh, normal. I think normal is way, way too much. We can of course change the, the softness here. I think that's, Good. And then again, we can use the, the cloud trick. Let's, let's see how this looks. So let's add a, a fill. Let's do the clouds and then just multiply the crowd, the clouds. Yeah, that, that looks good. I think that looks, it gives a little bit of a extra, 
extra variants to the whole thing. And yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, I'm going to stop the video right here. We're going to have just one more video in this mini series. We're going to do a rendering. And I'm going to show you one of the cool things about uh, Marmoset 4, which is uh, how, how to connect everything, right? Because that's one question that um, a lot of people have about Marmoset, like what kind of profile should I be using? Should I be using metallic roughness? Should I be using specular glossiness? Should I be using any other? And the cool thing about that is that Marmoset 4 is system agnostic. So you're going to be able to use any sort of setup as long as you know how to properly connect it. So that's it for this one, guys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe. Subscribe, share, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.